Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed and welcome back to another video with the uh, CBR 600 Honda. Um, in this video, as the title suggests, we are going to be replacing the brake pads on the back of this bike. The pads themselves are pretty low, they're pretty worn, um, so they're in uh, dire need of change. So yeah, let's um, let's get amongst it. What we're going to be doing is fitting EBC double H sintered uh, brake pads. I've used these uh, on many bikes in the past and I can't rate them highly enough. They are a very, very good pad with plenty of feel. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the braking uh, efficiency that these pads offer is second to none. Um, I highly, highly recommend them. Anyway, what we, uh, what we need to do is obviously we need to access the rear caliper, but what I'm going to do um, for access is I'm going to remove the uh, exhaust. It is only a slip on, so I can uh, just remove these two springs and the bolt and the exhaust comes off. So yeah, I'll get on with that and I'll see you in a sec. <laughs> Okay, here we are. As you can see, with the exhaust removed, we've got good access to the caliper. And what I've done is I've just popped it on the floor down here. Um, so, caliper, what we need to do is just pop the caliper off. Um, there's a bolt there and then a slide pin here. Um, so what we'll do is we will pop out the bolt first. And there we go. As you can see, loads of copper slip over it. Never going to seize. And then this little slide pin is a six mil hex. Six mil, as you can see. And undo it to the end of the thread and you'll get to a point where it won't come out anymore and then you should just be able to pull it out like so. Okay, there we are. Right, now we should be able to just lift the caliper off the disc and there is a little bush which sits just there like so um, but that the slide pin does pop through so I'll keep all of that together and then if we look at the caliper itself we can see we've got the uh, the pads here and if we look at the state of the pads you can see they are quite well worn um, and the piston is quite a long way out okay right now what we need to do is undo this here this is just a little cover now um, if uh, if it hasn't had a bit of lube on it you may find it will struggle to come out so it might be an idea to just undo that before you dismount the caliper but underneath you can see there's a hex head and again um, that is not a six that is I think possibly a five actually yep that's a five mil and again with this it might be an idea to undo it before you dismount the caliper if you're expecting it to be tight. So we pop this pin out. And there we go. And there we are. Now the pads will literally just fall out. So um, if I pop the caliper down there just like that. These pads effectively sit at the front like so and obviously this pin goes through the caliper and holds it at the back. So they sit like that at the front and the pin secures it at the back. Once the uh, caliper, uh, the pads are removed from the caliper, as you can see we've got good access in here to be able to clean everything um, and all that sort of stuff. This little spring plate in here we'll take that out and give that a good clean and likewise this is a stainless steel little shim we'll take that out give that a good clean and we'll get in here and give all of this a good clean out using some brake cleaner so uh, yeah that's what i'll do next i'll get a jar pour a little bit of brake cleaner in it grab a toothbrush we can get cracking 
Right, before we start cleaning, what we want to do here is just look at the piston. As you can see, there's a little bit of gunge on there, but that's nothing that won't clean off with the brake cleaner and the toothbrush. We'll get in there in a moment. This little spring plate will come out. Um, but obviously this, this piston is quite well out because the pads were so worn, um, and obviously the more worn the, pa the pads are, the further out the piston has to come in order to press them against the disc. So if we look here, um, I mean, the bike is leaning slightly over, but obviously you get the plan. Um, it is pretty much showing on the lower... Um, line on the on the reservoir um, and what we do need to do uh, before we can install new pads is we need to press the piston back in and it hopefully will move quite freely um, especially once we've given it a clean but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the nut and uh, bolt out of the reservoir and recover it a little bit fiddly right okay so, um, I'll take the cap off and have a look at the condition of the fluid. Now that does look pretty stinking, so uh, yeah, I will be replacing that. I'm not going to do that in this video, but you can you get the idea. Um, now, what we'll do is we will push the piston back up shortly once we've given it a good scrub. So what I need to do is with my toothbrush, this is brake, it looks like water, but it is actually brake cleaner, believe it or not. Get in here, get around the piston, and as you can see, it's coming up absolutely gleaming. Look at that, look, you wouldn't recognize it. Um, and then get in, give the whole thing a good clean. Now, I'm not wearing gloves, I should be. It's a brake cleaner is is a solvent it'll take all the grease out of my hands so i'm avoiding getting on my hands but i would advise you to wear gloves don't necessarily do what i do and then with a little spring clip i may have to oh there we go now i've got it out right so here is the spring clip and if i give that a bit of a scrub as well you'll see it will get all this old brake dust off Needs a bit more effort, but yeah, you get the idea. And likewise, with the little plate that we removed from the caliper carrier, we'll give that a scrub too. So, um, what we need to do, obviously, once we've gone around the whole of the caliper, uh, the the piston, all the way around, is we can then look to push it back into back into the caliper now. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's a bit difficult, but we, what we need, do need to do is we need to pay attention to the level because obviously um, as, as the level goes down, uh, every conscientious owner does tend to top the level up as, it's, as, it, as it lowers. So the further out the piston goes, the lower the level will go, so people will top it up. Obviously, if we push it back in, there is a chance that it could overflow. So we do need to pay attention to this. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on the level. I'm going to attempt to push the piston back in it may need I may need to get something to lean on it with <sighs> yes a little bit a little bit stiff it is moving it is moving it's just hurting the old thumbs I'm keeping an eye on the level it's getting towards the upper now Okay, yeah, it's pretty much bang on the upper. Um, if it is, if it is going to overflow, then obviously what you do, get a little syringe or something and just take a little bit out, um, just so that it doesn't overflow. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to crack on, cleaning the rest of the caliper. I'm also going to clean the caliper carrier and give these two a good scrub, and then I'll bring it back when we're ready to uh, start getting the new pads installed to the caliper. There we are, as you can see, the uh, the caliper looks a heck of a lot cleaner than it did. I've given all of this a good clean, and these plates, whilst they are stained, are actually clean of um, of, of brake dust, so I'm happy, with, uh, I'm happy with all of those. So, what we'll uh, do now is 
get the uh, the pads fitted. So I'll open them up. Obviously, what I need to do is fit them to the caliper. Uh, I need to fit the little plates and everything back onto the housing. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's what we'll do next. Okay, first little plate. Just pop it back on the caliper carrier, and just like so. And this one goes back into the caliper and just pops into place like so. Just making sure it's centrally seated. There we are. Oops, <laughs> popped out. And let's try that again. And there we go. Hopefully it'll stay where it is now. Right, let's crack open the uh, the pads. Okay, so here we have the pads, and obviously they're gonna they're gonna fit in that direction. Right, what people um, will tell you to do is slap copper slip all over everything. Now. You don't need to put copper slip on the uh, the pads at all. What you need to do use is um, anti squeal paste. This is called Plasti Lube, and all we need is a tiny, and I do mean tiny, a little bit like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little dab on each of these shoulders, and that is where it mounts onto. The, uh, the caliper carrier where that stainless steel plate is. A little bit there. And then the remainder, I am going to put around the piston and on each of the lobes of the lower spring. So basically anywhere where the, caliper, the, the pad touches the caliper, including the piston, put, just put a little thin, just a thin coat in, and that'll do you. You don't need copper slip everywhere. There's absolutely no need for that whatsoever. Right, what we're gonna do next is, I'm gonna give this little pin a clean, um, because I didn't do that a second ago. I did forget, actually. Um, I'm gonna give it a, a bit of a scrub, and to be fair, it's come up. Okay, yeah, there we go, it's come up nice. And this, again, is gonna get a little coat of Plasti Lube. Again, less is more with this stuff. You don't need to go absolutely crazy with it. And there we are. Okay, so, we'll take our first pad and our second oops let's get them the right way around like so take our first pad and our second pad and then our pin can go through Get it all lined up. And then tighten it down. And there we go. Okay, so as you can see, we've got plenty, plenty of space for the disc to fit, more than enough room. Obviously that gap will, be, uh, will get narrowed down once we've got the caliper installed and uh, we've pumped pump the pedal to uh, to bring the piston out again. Okay, so we've got Plasti Lube on both of those faces. Make sure the two pads are either side of the disc and offer it up to the housing like so. Our little rubber boot fits in the middle just like so. Um, right, what I need to do 
to have three hands. Okay, we'll take some copper slip here. And this is where I'm gonna use copper slip because it's a good anti-seize. But I'm not gonna go absolutely bonkers with it. I'm just gonna put a tiny amount all over the pin and the threads. Okay, so take our little rubber bush, make sure that the, the pads are aligned correctly. Just like so. Pop our rubber bush in and then push the pin all the way through until it seats and then we can tighten it down. And there we are. Right, next, we've got the rear pin here. Again, a bit of copper slip, just around the threads. That's all I'm putting on it. Fit that in and make sure it's aligned. Turn her up. And there we go, that is that all done. Right, lastly, what I'm gonna do, the cap, a little bit of copper slip around the threads just so that it will come out easy next time. And then put that onto the caliper these are a slippery little bugger. And there we go. And then just snip that up. And that is it. That is all we needed to do. Okay, so the piston is currently completely withdrawn into the caliper. So what we need to do is we need to reseat it. So if I give it a little pump, you can see the, you can see the caliper sliding across and there we go. We've got a solid pedal now and that is the job done. Absolutely 100% good. And as you can see, if I hold the reservoir level, you can see it's just below the upper line, whereas before it was probably at or just above it. So what I'll do, I'll reinstall the reservoir back onto the bracket. There's a little nut to go on it. And there we go, that is the job done. Absolutely happy days and the pedal feels good. And yeah, that'll be the brakes. Absolutely bang on, on the back now. Okay guys, that is the job done. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all again for the very next video. Take care guys, bye bye now.